Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition.
baby. All right. Sit right down. Take my joint. Burn it down. Let's get out of here, baby. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home. I'm only sitting and listening, and my baby tried to take me home. I'm only sitting and listening, and my baby tried to take me home. Here's a song my dad wrote called Bloody Merry Morning. Well, it's a bloody merry morning. Baby left me without warning sometime in the night. 
so I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. As we taxi down the runway with the smog and haze reminding me of how I feel. Just a country boy who's learning that the pitfalls of the city are extremely real. All the nightlife and the parties, temptation and deceit, the order of the day. Well, it's a bloody merry morning, cause I'm leaving baby somewhere in L.A. Well, it's a bloody merry morning, baby left me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with Vore, getting her the nature of my plan. Taxi down the runway with a smog and haze reminding me of how I feel. Just a country boy who's learning that the pitfalls of the city are extremely real. All the nightlife and the parties, temptation and deceit, the order of the day. Well, it's a bloody merry morning, cause I'm leaving baby somewhere in LA. Well, it's a bloody merry morning, baby left me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. She's a rich girl, she don't try to hide it, diamonds on the soles of her shoes. He's a poor boy, empty as a pocket, empty as a pocket with nothing to lose. Sing ta-na-na, ta-na-na-na, 
Diamonds on the soles of his shoes Ta-na-na, ta-na-na-na -na -na. Diamonds on the soles of his shoes Diamonds on the soles of his shoes Diamonds on the soles of his shoes Poor boy Diamonds on the soles of his shoes She's crazy, she's got diamonds on the soles of her shoes Well, that's one way to lose these walking blues Diamonds on the soles of her shoes She was physically forgot, but then she slipped into my pocket with my car key She said, you're taking me for granted cause I plead you Wearing these diamonds on the soles of my shoes And I can say woo As if everybody knows what I'm talking about I think everybody here knows exactly what I'm talking about I'm talking about diamonds on the soles of my shoes Oh, diamonds on the soles of my shoes Talking about diamonds on the soles of my shoes She makes the sign of the teaspoon He makes the sign of the wave Poor boy changes clothes and puts on aftershave To compensate for his ordinary shoe She said, honey, take me dancing But they ended up by sleeping in the doorway By the bodegas and the lights on Upper Broadway Wearing diamonds on the soles of their shoes And I can say, whoa As if everybody knows what I'm talking about I think everybody here knows exactly what I'm talking about I'm talking about diamonds on the soles of my shoes, Lord Oh, diamonds on the soles of my shoes Oh, diamonds on the soles of my shoes Talking about
and ain't seen tomorrow yet. No sleep until you're six feet sink and no food till summer lifts. I'm loving all the good people running from the life I left behind. I don't mind if you treat me unkind cause I'm leaving all the time. And oh, you never get too far. start to go until you start to go sweet dreaming is the one thing screaming from the pages of her soul she's so heavy but you think she's ready to escape the world she knows and oh you never get too far You start to go
I'm Scott Hoagland. This is Planet Hemp. I was sitting in a Motel 6 and the Bible was there on the shelf. So I decided to pick it up and read a verse. Well, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, God gave every man every herb bearing a seed which is on the earth. Well, it's a plant I had which bears a seed, ending me up in a jail. And they took my herb away and threw me in a cage. Well, that makes me ask the question, who are the... Throughout this program, you will learn how one of the world's oldest cultivated crops can play a major role in dealing with some of today's environmental struggles, as well as increasing the wealth, economy, and well-being of its population. Gotta stick together and tell them this shit ain't right. Learn first and then decide. Allow me to introduce Dr. Tom Maloney. Research hemp goes back a long ways uh, for uh, being used by man. Uh. Dr. Maloney is the head of the Wood Materials and Engineering Department at the Washington State University. It is in his laboratories that he and his associates test building products manufactured from hemp. Next, I'd like you to meet Ken Friedman, president of American Hemp Mercantile in Seattle, Washington. Ken imports and sells goods made from hemp, including paper, fabric, food, even furniture. And this is Paul Stanford, president of Tree Free Eco Paper in Portland, Oregon. Paul sells the many paper products that can be made from hemp, from envelopes to letterhead to corrugated boxes to computer paper. Well, our paper is made from non-wood fiber, primarily hemp. But first, let's clear the air of a few misconceptions. Hemp and marijuana are often referred to as the same substance, but this is untrue. Hemp is a plant that grows um, over most of the world. Its uh, Latin name is Cannabis sativa. It is the same plant that uh, marijuana comes from, but it's grown differently and they hybrid it so it's very low in THC. If you were to think of an apple tree, hemp would be the tree itself, the bark, the roots, the stems, the leaves, the whole tree. Marijuana would then be the fruit of the tree, or the apples. Hemp is a crop that grows annually. It grows uh, relatively rapidly, uh, depending on location. And Pacific Northwest, uh, from what I understand, is a good location for growing the hemp plant. You can get a lot of material grown annually. You can grow it on uh, land that might not be good for forest. Uh. Perhaps the biggest hurdle tripping the hemp industry is the mistaken idea that when hemp is grown, marijuana is always produced. What a lot of people get confused about what is hemp and what's marijuana and I think in other parts of your program you're discussing that but they're quite different. I always tell people, I say, well what is hemp? I say, well just think about hemp rope. That's uh, the hemp that you're really familiar with. Marijuana is only grown on female plants. If male plants are grown, only industry usable material is produced. Besides growing only male plants, science has created a genetic hybrid that produces no marijuana whatsoever. Well, non-industrial hemp would be illegal marijuana. The things that's being grown in people's basements are imported from Thailand. Um, industrial hemp is a different hybrid. It's grown differently. It's grown for the stalk. All the fibers come from the stalk, so they grow it close together. They don't grow it for the leaves or the buds. It's the same plant, but uh, the plant that produces the best and most fiber uh, doesn't produce the psychoactive substance in any quantities that uh, are useful for drug production. They've been doing it for uh, generations in Western Europe and for centuries in Eastern Europe. Uh, in fact, in the United States, we had industrial hemp until 1937. In Scientists have dated hemp use back 12,000 years. It is known to be one of the first four cultivated crops. 12,000 years ago, hemp was one of the first crops that was purposely cultivated by human beings in the first agricultural settlements that uh, sprung up in uh, uh, the Tigris-Euphrates Valleys and in the Yellow River Valley. Sailing ships used hemp to make the sailcloth, and hemp's been used in making paper for centuries and centuries. 
this one plant was used to make the paper that Bibles and even the Declaration of Independence were printed on. Hemp has been woven into garments throughout history and across the world. Not only was the very first American flag sewn by Betsy Ross made from hemp, but so were the clothes and supplies of the many soldiers that fought to keep her waving. It was illegal not to grow hemp in some of the British colonies because they needed it for their uh, sails and their ropes, and they needed enough of a production to satisfy the Navy. But more recently, in the 1940s, when the United States was at war in the Pacific and many of our supplies were cut off, the United States government produced a video called Hemp for Victory. This video was to encourage farmers to grow hemp for the war effort. American hemp must meet the needs of our Army and Navy as well as of our industries. In 1942, patriotic farmers at the government's request planted 36,000 acres of seed hemp, an increase of several thousand percent. The goal for 1943 is 50,000 acres of seed hemp. Today, when grown for paper production, it would take four acres of trees to make the same amount of usable pulp material as one acre of hemp. Well, hemp is the longest and strongest plant fiber, so it uh, can make a stronger paper than uh, wood fiber. Wood fiber's maximum length is about seven to eight millimeters, where hemp fiber can be up to three meters long or hundreds of times longer. That same one acre of hemp can be harvested three times a year, for hemp only has a 120-day growing season. Tree-free paper can be made with um, any combination of hemp pulp from 10% to 90% to 100%. The paper we're currently producing is 90% hemp, 10% cotton. And it's um, got the obvious advantages over uh, wood pulp because you don't need to cut trees to make nice paper. It's also uh, stronger than wood pulp. It can be recycled more times. According to USDA Bulletin 404, a waste product from making canvas, rope, lace, and linen, that waste product makes more than four times more paper than trees. According to a Dutch study that was published in last July of 93's Pulp and Paper magazine, the total production from hemp, both the bast fiber, which can be made into both paper and textiles, plus the herd fiber, those fibers together produce more than eight times more paper than the most productive tree species. Another advantage to hemp paper over tree paper is that no harmful acids are used in the bleaching process. It can be bleached with hydrogen peroxide um, to avoid the chlorine problems from uh, paper industry. So it is an ideal product for paper. It's an annual plant. It uh, yields a lot of pulp, and you can make paper with the byproducts of the uh, textile industry. So you can use all of the plant and, and make each of them cheaper. All of the plant. All of the plant. Yeah. Hemp is composed of very long fibers, up to 15 feet in length. And depending on how the hemp is grown, these fibers can be woven into fabric. Fabric as soft as women's lingerie or as rough as burlap. Uh, again, as you know, hemp fiber can be used uh, in the United States and is being used in cloth products. Uh. The Chinese are doing a better job right now on the lighter weight fabrics. Um, they are spinning finer threads that the Hungarians will, are able to do and will start doing in bigger quantities immediately. There are um, probably hundreds of products you could do from hemp. The ones we're currently doing are fabrics in almost everything you make from fabric. Uh, clothing, bags, wallets, uh, hats things like that are all being made currently futons it's a good uh, upholstery fabric fabric made from hemp is three times stronger than cotton is more water absorbent than cotton and is warmer than cotton um, it's a good alternative to cotton because it's grown without pesticides it um, stops soil erosion it's uh, pest resistant it's drought resistant uh, cotton's a very uh, 
Cotton has a lot of impact on the environment. It's grown with a lot of pesticides. There's some soil degradation problems. There's erosion problems. There's the, the problems of harvesting it and, and things like that. Uh, hemp is very easy to grow. Um, it's naturally resistant to pest, and it's naturally resistant to droughts, and so you can grow it without putting new chemicals into the environment. Visualize, if you can, a house made entirely of hemp. Start with the foundation, the concrete. In France, they have perfected a technique where you mix hemp herd with lime. That substance then mineralizes into a material that is stronger, lighter, and more durable than concrete. Uh, as one of the n numerous products where the hemp material could go would be in the, this product line either as... On top of our foundation lie the building materials made from trees. Hemp has the potential to replace these products. But long fiber is very intriguing to many people because you can take that and make it into long structural pieces using that fiber because you've got the fiber length and the hemp fiber is very strong. And so well, right now, the demand exceeds the supply. And because of that, that's driven the price up. In the long term, though, when uh, there aren't the artificial barriers to the market that exist today, hemp fiber will be less expensive. Within the walls of our house, we need plumbing. Hemp can be made into a biodegradable substitute for plastic plumbing pipes. And here's a sample of uh, a hemp board. Uh, there's some others here too. I, I'm holding holding up one it's uh, it looks something like what I just showed but not quite the same because some of this uh, has to be worked out yet exactly how to work with, with these materials some of the machinery isn't quite right but that's because we're going using wood machinery and not hemp machinery now this board is not as good as this one over here uh, this is again you probably can't see it on the camera but it it has a nicer surface uh, it looks better and I know because the numbers aren't on the back here, but I do know it's much stronger in this. In fact, it's much stronger than the, the traditional MDF or medium density fiber board I just showed you. In a house fire, people are often killed by the gases from their carpet as it burns. Hemp carpet releases no poisonous fumes. This could be uh, uh, around doors, windows, what have you, where we use high quality lumber in the past, which we really don't have much of anymore, no matter what anybody says. As long as this is painted, you would never know the difference between this being a, a nice mill piece of Douglas fir, oak, what have you. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a wood grain, you can print it on, overlay it, and what have you. A lot of this is done already. So it's moving into a lot of the traditional uses that where we used to have lumber. Oil from the hemp seed can even be used to make paints and varnishes. It works in there. It has worked elsewhere. It's been used some in this country in the past. But there is the possibility of making this kind of product with the fiber as well. well there's all kinds of mixtures, too. You could use a good, long <clears throat> hemp fiber on the surfaces and some poor fiber or particle in the middle because it's for bending purposes and the fiber gives you the bending property. So there's all kinds of opportunities. It's going to boil down to economics like all of these things. How much does it cost to do it? How much does it cost to grow the material, harvest it, process it? Um, and supply and demand's in there too. If you don't have the wood material, if you want to keep making these kind of products, you use something else. All of us want it to happen as soon as possible. It would be good for the American farmers, it would be good for the environment, it would be good for the consumer. We get cheaper hemp products here um, very quickly. The same process by which we make ethanol fuel from corn can be used to convert hemp into a usable gas for our cars and to heat our houses. There is a process which you can make uh, the same way you make ethanol from corn, you can make it out of hemp, uh, very economically, I think. You can also make uh, hemp seed oil, it can be used as a fuel. Probably. This would mean less dependency on any foreign oils and would reduce the price of gasoline in this country. But what about food? Hemp seeds contain all of the necessary and essential fatty acids, amino acids, and protein necessary for human life. 
you can use it as a cooking additive. You can use the hemp seeds themselves in cooking. Uh, you can cook in the oil. It's, it's very... And such a variety of foods can be made with the hemp seed. Anything from hemp ice cream to hemp peanut butter. All of which aid in increasing the body's immune system and actually remove life-threatening plaque from our arteries. It's very high in the, the essential fatty acids, uh, high in protein, low in the bad kind of cholesterol, high in the good kind of cholesterol. It's, a, it's like flaxseed oil as far as all the health benefits. Just as it has done in the past, the potential is there for hemp food to play a key role in ending our world's hunger problem. Probably everything can cure world hunger if you do it right. Um, it could be part of the solution, certainly. And it's, it's a plant that you can grow and, and be good for the environment at the same time feed people. It's high in protein. Um, it would contribute to the solution. So what climate conditions are good for growing hemp? Well, hemp is indigenous to Central Asia region, area Kazakhstan, uh, Pakistan, the Tibetan region of China, and Kashmir region of India. Hemp is like a weed. It can grow virtually anywhere in virtually any soil. Well, there are two main sources of hemp in the U.S. market right now, uh, Hungarian hemp and Chinese hemp. Well, it's grown in Holland. It was uh, made legal to grow in England, I believe, in June of this year. And there's some hemp farms in uh, Canada at the present time. Hemp can be planted in areas that have been deforested or fallen victim to a fire. You can grow it on uh, land that might not be good for forest. I uh, understand so somewhere, some parts here in eastern Washington where it's not particularly great for growing anything. Hemp, a hemp crop would grow well. Its long roots anchor the soil in place to prevent erosion and its nutrient-rich foliage mixes with the soil to actually increase the fertility for the coming years. This is why hemp is also a good rotation crop for farmers. Judging from the acceptance our products have gotten, I'm pretty sure the general public would not have any objection or very little objection to industrial hemp being grown here. The politicians don't realize that. Nobody even wants to talk about it yet. Um, but with the environmental issues becoming more crucial with the American farmers needing new crops, with the paper industry needing new pulp, it should happen very quickly. The idea behind the hemp movement is not to eliminate jobs or eliminate industries. It is to create more jobs and new industries to integrate hemp knowledge and hemp products into today's society. The logical way to use this uh, to start with is as a supplement to present wood material in an operating medium density fiberboard plant like I showed here or particle board uh, which is a little coarser particle as a, a supplement to that raw material and uh, so people become familiar with the processing uh, of the material and, and it gets uh, used pr uh, properly in the board and then eventually with success you could move on to a, uh, a manufacturing plant that would use the hemp material exclusively. Um, I'm not optimistic. It might be five or ten years before they allow it. And what we're trying to do is put the hemp products under the nose of the American consumers so they can see it's a good product um, and not be afraid of it and start uh, accepting it and accepting the idea of growing it here. Support your local hemp industry. Buy hemp products. See for yourself. Test them against products that you use now. Which do you like better? then make a choice. It would appear that it has lots of benefits and a lot of good things that you can do with it. And uh, the secret is economics, like I said before, and developing a way uh, to take it out of the political and emotional scene so that there's, there's not a concern that this, you're growing a drug material rather than a building material. But um, it's just a question on how much political resistance there's going to be. It could happen within one year of them, of the United States government allowing it. It might happen sooner um, under a permit plan. And I, I think what's going to happen is that cannabis will be taxed and regulated and that hemp fiber and seed will be grown uh, without regulation. And uh, within 10 years will become a major source of fiber for uh, 
paper making. I'm Scott Hoagland. This is Planet Hemp. Think about it. Long ago, when these ancient Grecian temples were new, hemp was already old in the service of mankind. For thousands of years, even then, this plant had been grown for cordage and coarse cloth in China and elsewhere in the East. For centuries prior to about 1850, all the ships that sailed the Western Seas were rigged with hemp and rope and sails. For the sailor, no less than the hangman, hemp was indispensable. A 44-gun frigate, like our cherished old Ironsides, took over 60 tons of hemp for rigging. Including an anchor cable 25 inches in circumference. The Conestoga wagons and prairie schooners of pioneer days were covered with hemp and canvas. Indeed, the very word canvas comes from the Arabic word for hemp. In those days, hemp was an important crop in Kentucky and Missouri. Then came cheaper imported fibers for cordage, like jute, sisal, and manila hemp, and the culture of hemp in America declined. But now, with Philippine and East Indian sources of hemp in the hands of the Japanese, and shipment of jute from India curtailed, American hemp must meet the needs of our army and navy as well as of our industries. In 1942, patriotic farmers at the government's request planted 36,000 acres of seed hemp, an increase of several thousand percent. The goal for 1943 is 50,000 acres of seed hemp. In Kentucky, much of the seed hemp acreage is on river bottom land such as this, along the Kentucky River Gorge. Some of these fields are inaccessible except by boat. Thus, plans are afoot for a great expansion of the hemp industry as a part of the war program. This film is designed to tell farmers how to handle this ancient crop, now little known outside Kentucky and Wisconsin. This is hemp seed. Be careful how you use it. For to grow hemp legally, you must have a federal registration and tax stamp. This is provided for in your contract. Ask your AAA committee man or your county agent about it. Don't forget, hemp demands a rich, well-drained soil such as is found here in the bluegrass region of Kentucky or in central Wisconsin. It must be loose and rich in organic matter. Poor soils won't do. Soil that will grow good corn will usually grow hemp. Hemp is not hard on the soil. In Kentucky, it has been grown for several years on the same ground, though this practice is not recommended. A dense and shady crop, hemp tends to choke out weeds. Here's a Canada thistle that couldn't stand the competition. Dead as a dodo. Thus, hemp leaves the ground in good condition for the following crop. For fiber, hemp should be sown five pecks to the acre. With drill, the closer the rows, the better. These rows are spaced about four inches. This hemp has been broadcast. Either way, it should be sown thick enough to grow a slender stalk. Here's an ideal stand, the right height to be harvested easily, thick enough to grow slender stalks that are easy to cut and process. Stalks like these here on the left, they yield the most fiber and the best. Those on the right are too coarse and woody. For seed, hemp is planted in hills like corn, sometimes by hand. Hemp is a dioecious plant. The female flower is inconspicuous, but the male flower is easily spotted. In seed production, after the pollen has been shed, these male plants are cut out. 
These are the seeds on a female plant. Hemp for fiber is ready to harvest when the pollen is shedding and the leaves are falling. In Kentucky, hemp harvest comes in August. Here, the old standby has been the self-rake reaper, which has been used for a generation or more. Hemp grows so luxuriantly in Kentucky that harvesting is sometimes difficult, which may account for the popularity of the self-rake with its lateral stroke. A modified rice binder has been used to some extent. This machine works well in average hemp. Recently, the improved hemp harvester, used for many years in Wisconsin, has been introduced in Kentucky. This machine spreads the hemp in a continuous swath. It is a far cry from this fast and efficient modern harvester to the Armstrong model of yore. But here's one kind of harvester, at least, that doesn't stall in the heaviest hemp. In Kentucky, hand cutting is practiced in opening fields for the machines. In Kentucky, hemp is shucked as soon as safe after cutting, to be spread out for retting later in the fall. Wisconsin, hemp is harvested in September. Here, the hemp harvester with automatic spreader is standard equipment. Note how smoothly the rotating apron lays the swath preparatory to retting. Here, it is a common and essential practice to leave headlands around hemp fields. These strips may be planted to other crops, preferably small grain. Thus, the harvester has room to make its first round without preparatory hand cutting. Here, the machine is running over corn stubble. When the cutter bar is much shorter than the hemp is tall, overlapping occurs. Not so good for retting. The standard cut is eight to nine feet. The length of time hemp is left on the ground to ret depends on the weather. The swaths must be turned to get a uniform ret. The core breaks away readily, like this. The hemp is about ready to take up and bind into bundles. Well retted hemp is light to dark gray. The fiber tends to pull away from the stalk. The presence of stalks in the bowstring stage indicates that retting is well underway. hemp is short or tangled, or when the ground is too wet for machines, it is bound by hand. A wooden buck is used. Twine will do for tying, but the hemp itself may... Uh, I want to urge you that if you uh, are a loved one or looking for a doctor who can help you get a medical marijuana permit, then we know doctors all over this country and the world, in fact, and uh, we'd be happy to refer you to them. So if you need a doctor who can help you get a medical marijuana permit, give us a call at 503-235-4606, that number that just popped up there on your screen. That's our office here in Portland. You can call us at 503-235-4606. If you have any questions about the Israeli-Canadian corporate takeover, uh, you can call us and ask. We'll be happy to tell you. I'll give you these news articles that have appeared in the Huffington Post and Gajapreneur. If you have any of these conditions here and you want to try medical marijuana, give us a call. Again, that number is 503-235-4606. It's 503-235-4606. And for more information, you can go to our website. It's crrh.org. That's crrh.org. Anything you want to say in closing there, uh, Eric? I think we're good. I got it all covered. Okay, I think we do too. Thank you, <laughs> Eric. You. Mr. Eric Llewellyn. Thank you, viewers. Mr. John Cornett is ready to play about a minute's worth of music, and you can look at some pictures from our medical marijuana garden. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week and help us restore him. Like that.
Thank you. 